Welcome to True You Ministries. This is part three of Keys to Good Physical and Emotional Health. And with me today is my guest, Holly Soto. Holly, welcome. And it's so good to see you again. Thank you so much. It's good to be here again. Yeah. So Holly and I, uh, we were talking about physical and emotional health and the tie-in to that. And we ran out of time. So we decided that we would do a follow-up because there were some really important things that Holly wanted to cover in this segment. And we didn't want you all to lose out on this. So why don't we just get started? So Holly, what are some practical steps a person can take in order to improve their physical health? Yeah, so I'm glad we're touching base on this again because I think this is one of the hard parts when you hear about getting healthy physically, you know, emotionally. It's like, okay, where do I start though? Um, so I've got quite a few, so feel free to jump in along the way and we can discuss. Um, one of the first ones that I would suggest um, is if you have a relationship with God to start with prayer. Uh, this is a pretty forgotten or just not really included aspect of health and fitness for a lot of people. Um, but I think it's really important to invite God into the process and even Pray things like ask God how he sees you or ask what he wants you to do or where he sees you in the future. I think this can be a really powerful uh, step to take in almost letting God show you like where he can take you, what is possible. Um, I like to do this on behalf of my clients too. Like I will pray for them and ask God what he wants to to show me for them. Mm -hmm. And then I will share that with them. And a lot of times mm -hmm. I think that's very, it can be eye opening. It can be empowering. It can be affirming of something that they're already thinking. And it just sort of validates their feeling. Um, and I think puts a little bit of oomph for lack of a better word behind that goal that you see, like it makes it feel more possible when you see you know, God can get me to this point, or he wants to do this in and through my fitness or my food that I'm eating or whatever that is. So I would always kind of lay a foundation of prayer, bring God into it and ask what he wants to do and ask him to give you the strength to follow through with the things that you want to do. I think that's so great because we tend to forget to go to, pr to, to the Lord in prayer first, because that's, he's our source. He will have answers for us. And yeah, I think that is just such a forgotten thing, just, you know, on a daily basis. So that's a great point. Yeah. Um, what else do you think uh, are, is a good first step for people in terms of improving their health or even starting this journey? Because there's so much information out there and it could be really overwhelming. Yes, there is. There's a lot of information and and a lot of people are very overwhelmed by it. Um, one of the key things I think that people can do is to, before you jump into maybe, okay, I'm going to start eating healthy, or I'm going to start a workout program or whatever your goal may be. One of the things that you can do is to identify any obstacles that either have prevented you in the past from succeeding. If you've tried to say, lose weight or follow a certain diet for other health reasons, mm -hmm. um, or obstacles that you think could prevent you from succeeding. Um, so for a lot of people, time is an issue, like me needing to make time, needing to put it in your schedule, um, needing mm -hmm. to talk it out with your spouse and your family and figure out how can we make this work. Um, mm -hmm. For some people, it's a vacation, it's a wedding, it's a big event. Like, how can you plan ahead for that so that that doesn't throw you off or feel like you fell off the wagon or um, you don't go on vacation, gain 10 pounds and then come back and feel discouraged. So kind of thinking through, you know, what things are going to make this really hard for me and what can I do now to kind of adjust mm -hmm. for those things? Um, mm -hmm. What hasn't worked in the past? What can I mm -hmm. change? Like maybe the diet was too restrictive in the past and you just mm -hmm. couldn't handle it for more than a month or something. So maybe you right. need to change the way that you approach food this next time around. Um, so yeah. I would spend some time, you know, maybe journal down some of those things and make a plan for how you're going to try to get around those obstacles this time instead of letting them stop you. Right. I think that's really great. I know with my clients uh, and I, and I work with clients in a different aspect and that's their emotional health. 
And a lot of the times they're just stuck, just like your clients with wanting to lose weight. They've tried so many different things. They're not able to get past a, cer a certain point. What I have found to be true with my clients and why they get stuck and why they're not able to, to keep moving forward is what they're believing, right? So mm -hmm. I can't do it. This is too hard, right? And so I work with them in getting to those root issues and identifying, so what are you believing and is what you're believing helping you or is it preventing you from really making progress? So is that something that you've encountered with some of your clients as well? Yes, <laughs> I encounter that all the time. Um, false beliefs, fears. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's a, a false belief that you can't reach a certain weight or you can't look a certain way or you can't follow through with a healthy diet for a certain amount of time. Um, a lot of people have a fear that maybe it's, it's not there when you first start the program, although I think it is for a lot of people, um, mm -hmm. is this fear that it's not going to work. Like, mm -hmm. what if I don't succeed? What if I fail again? Now I'm a failure. Or what if I never get back to how healthy I was five years ago, 10 years ago, whatever. I think there's this fear of failure that stops a lot of people because it can be so discouraging and so difficult. Yeah. And I think yeah. for a lot of people, it arises two weeks, three weeks, four weeks into trying to be healthier, because that's the point you're like, okay, I should be like 10 pounds <laughs> down and it's all going to be going well. And when people have yeah. lost a pound or less sometimes, right. that's, right. I think when that fear creeps in that this isn't going to work, yeah. you know, what if I follow through with all this and I'm still the same in three months, six months, um, and for most people, it's normal to take a really long time to lose weight, especially if you're doing it in a healthy way. Um, mm -hmm. And so working through some of those sort of false beliefs that I think mostly have come from culture that you can lose weight at these yeah. rapid rates and that's normal um, to actually mm -hmm. normalize the fact that it does take a long time. It took a long time to gain weight. It's going to take a long mm -hmm. time to lose it. Don't let the fear prevent you from following through with the actions just because you're not seeing results right away. Like mm -hmm. if you can stay faithful with it, it will mm -hmm. pay off, but mm -hmm. you've got to be consistent with it and stick with it for a long time and just trust the process, right? Like a lot of things in life, you probably experience that with clients. If, <laughs> if you can trust the process and that what you're doing is working, even if you can't mm -hmm. see immediate results, you're going to be far right. more successful. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, you know, it's, it's really not about the destination so much as it is the journey. And that's a really hard place to be, especially when you've been struggling with trying to get the 10 pounds off or the 20 pounds or whatever it is. Uh, I know that the naturopathic doctor that I'm working with, so I'll just share a little bit. I had a three week, de a three week detox that I had to do with her. Right. And I, I read through it and I was prepared for it. But for whatever reason, I didn't see that week two of the detox was no meat protein. And I kind of had a meltdown. I was like, what do you mean I can't eat any meat? And I'm going, I can't do this. I don't, this is, this just doesn't work for me. And it was just such an emotional trigger for me. I had to do some deeper work and figure out what that was all about. And I did, I figured it out. I shared it with her. She was really, really great. Uh, so she said, well, tell me what's going on. And so I said, well, this is what's going on. And and I loved how she reframed. It's not about what you can't eat or what you can't do, but reframing it. And I do a lot of reframing with my clients, reframing it to this is what I get to do instead yeah. Right. So reframing it from the negative and coming from that place of lack or deficiency, where how can we frame it for ourselves where there may be life and abundance in that? Yeah, I think that's huge. And that's something that I wanted to keep in mind to kind of touch base on today, too, in the same way, again, with physical, you know, they're always kind of mirroring each other, but mm -hmm. um, that when you are trying to improve your health, it is a get to thing 
uh, with God too. Um, it can be yeah. part of our spiritual lives and it is a mm-hmm. get to thing. Just, just like you, like going through a detox doesn't sound fun. That sounds like a have to no. thing, but if you can reframe <laughs> it in, I get to help my body clear out toxins. I get to help mm-hmm. kind of reset my body to become really healthy and feel really good and figure out what's going on with it and, you know, cleanse it and all of these things. Um, I get to go work out. I get to eat healthy food because these are going to make me feel so good. They're going to improve my life. They're going to help me get to my goals. Um, If you can look at it as a, this is a good thing that I get to do. I have the ability Mm -hmm. to move my body Mm -hmm. and go out and do these things and purchase these foods instead Mm -hmm. of, I have to do this. It's this heavy burden that makes it really hard. But I think that's really important to Mm -hmm. reframe the process to be, this is something I get to do and it's going to be really good for me not, Oh, this is a horrible thing I have to do. Right. Exactly. And, and the same thing with anyone that comes to me that they're struggling with maybe anxiety or stress, or, you know, maybe they're not able to control their anger and all of that and whatever issues uh, that, that are a part of that, you know, the, we live in a culture where we're looking at quick fixes and there is that expectation that, that you said where, you know, lose 10 pounds in three days. Well, I, you know, that's insane to me. Uh, <laughs> cause it's like, I mean, first of all, how healthy is that? And you'll end up gaining it back anyway, cause it's, that's not sustainable, yeah. but it's the same thing with, with people that are wanting to do some counseling with me that they've been struggling with an issue for so long. It Mm. is going to take time, at least a year, to uncover the root issues, to then start implementing some healthy ways of coping, because there are unhealthy ways of coping. Food is one of them. You know, substances are another. Um, There's anger. There's, you know, uh, being a workaholic. All these different ways of anesthetizing pain. But pain felt allows for healing to happen. And so a lot of people will want to avoid feeling any kind of pain. And I'm not saying Mm -hmm. that there's a physical pain in weight loss per se, there is an emotional aspect to it. So we have to look at when we're looking at making any kind of changes that are in the positive for us, I'm just thinking about this right now. There's a loss that happens that we have to grieve. And that is the way that we used to cope, the way maybe that we used to eat and maybe not exercise that got us to where we're at. There may be some medical issues. So there's losses in that that also need to be dealt with on an emotional level as well. And maybe some of that could be an obstacle for people in moving forward where they're not identifying there's some loss that's involved in this, but then I get to, again, I get mm-hmm. to. So, yeah. 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 That's, that's a great point. I do think that's a big part of it, especially with food and how we go to it for comfort mm-hmm. there. Yeah. I think there is a loss in there that I can't go to this bowl of ice cream or I can't go to my favorite restaurant or whatever. There is, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you said, I mean, you would know more about it, but maybe there is an element of needing to recognize that, think about it, address it grieve it in a sense if you need to, and then right. you focus on the good aspect of it. Yeah, absolutely. So I would love to hear some more from you with regard to specifically, what are some really great ways of eating that and, and picking foods that will um, help us? Because we know there's foods out there that hurt us. So we want to be able to focus on in our health you know, picking foods that will bring about healing for us physically, which in turn absolutely impacts our emotional health as well. So we'd love to hear from you. What are some things that people can do where it won't break the budget, by the way, but (laughs) it will help them get on the road, you know, and it's not all done at the same time. Right. Um, yeah, so I think, um, One of the big things is kind of like you said, is to maybe focus on what you can do, what you can eat, Mm -hmm. what you can do that's going to improve whatever it is you're trying to improve. Um, So generally, regardless of the goal or the disease or the condition, um, eating whole 
natural foods is a big one and as much as possible organic. Um, not every fruit and vegetable has to be organic. Um, there is a list that the EWG puts out every year called the dirty dozen list. And this will give you the top 12 that you should buy organic because they have the most pesticides in them. If something's not on that list, then like you said, you can probably save some money, not break the bank by buying some products, not organic because they're not going to have many pesticides in them. Um, and then just in general with other foods too, your, your meats, your fish, that type of thing being antibiotic free, hormone free, wild caught fish versus, um, farm raised fish and just trying to eat foods that really come from the earth. Like the stuff that God put here on the earth, that natural Mm -hmm. food that has fiber in it, that has vitamins and minerals and Mm -hmm. phytochemicals and antioxidants and all these things. Those are the foods to focus on and Mm -hmm. trying to cut back a bit on the packaged foods, the highly processed foods, the foods that have lots of sugar added to them, the foods that are full of chemicals, dyes, flavors, all that type of thing. So um, Mm. I generally would suggest try to eat those really wholesome natural foods like 80 to 90% of the time, and then Mm -hmm. give yourself a little bit of room for those more like fun foods maybe, or those Mm-hmm. comfort foods even. So where most of your diet is going to be really healthy and giving you tons of nutrition and keeping you full and all of that. Um, and then give yourself a little bit of wiggle room so that it doesn't feel like this burden or this super mm-hmm. restrictive diet. Um, yeah. but just to focus on what foods can make me feel good, can give me, um, natural energy can support my body's processes and the health of the cells and my immune system and all these things. Mm-hmm. Um, that is a big one that is going to help pretty much anyone across the board, whatever it is that they're struggling with. Yeah. 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 That's great. So, so then why is it important then to pick those organic or whole foods uh, that nourish us? Uh, Is there a connection? And I know there is, but I want to hear more from you, you know, that connection with the gut and the brain. Uh, you know, those foods that heal us. Uh, So, uh, you know, there's that saying, you know, garbage in, garbage out, you know, or you are what you eat. Uh, So I'd love to hear a little bit more. I'm I'm not as up on that gut brain connection, but I'd love to hear from you. And and I'm sure our listeners will as well. Uh, Why is that so important that we feed our gut, which then in turn helps our brain? Yeah, there's the gut is fascinating. I mean, there's so much research being done on it and always discovered. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's a lot we don't know yet, but Mm -hmm. we know that there's a connection between the gut and the brain, um, that the gut is essentially the second brain, or even some people think of it more as the actual brain. And it's just sending signals to the other brain to (laughs) send out other signals. Um, And the gut is where most of the immune system lives. Mm -hmm. Um, So your immune system most of your health is impacted by what's happening in your gut, the bacteria that live in there, the amount of good bacteria versus bad bacteria. These all affect Mm -hmm. your likelihood to get diseases, autoimmune conditions, different gut health Mm -hmm. and digestion issues. Um, And then it also impacts your brain, your mood, your feelings. So if you are eating garbage, Um, then it, it's sort of, yeah, that garbage out signal to your brain where you're going to feel more feelings of anxiety, of depression, of stress, um, those junk foods and chemicals. Um, I don't know the exact mechanisms and how it happens, but Mm -hmm. that does tend Mm -hmm. to lead to more of those types of feelings. Whereas when you're eating natural whole foods, um, omega-3 fatty acids, all the things that I talked about before, those are associated with <clears throat> lower levels of anxiety, depression, stress, all those things I mentioned, um, mm-hmm. higher levels of uh, chemicals like serotonin and dopamine, those like feel good, happy chemicals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what you eat does influence the way that you think and feel, and you might not mm-hmm. make that connection. They seem completely mm-hmm. separate, but they're actually very closely mm-hmm. intertwined. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I remember years ago when I was uh, on a a weight loss program, it removed all sugar, all processed sugar. And, you know, that was in the late 80s. And I made that connection because I would get headaches all the time. 
And when the sugar was eliminated, my headaches went away. And I went, "Uh uh-huh. So not eating sugar for 30 plus years. And if I eat something that has processed sugar in it, I feel it immediately. So I'm really in tune now to what my body is liking and what my body is rejecting and how it, it's how it's impacting not only you know me physically but also how I'm feeling as well. I know with the sugar the highs were highs and the crashes were they mm-hmm. were horrible. So our and you know and our bodies were designed by the Lord to to heal itself. So mm-hmm. I know that with a lot of the agriculture and the farming that's going on uh, in our in our country and probably around the world, and I know there's a biblical aspect to this in in the Old Testament, where not only does the Lord want us to have a Sabbath rest one day a week, but He also had a, a Sabbath year where there was no farming, none of that was going on. And yet people were able to still have everything that they needed because they were obeying what the Lord had had called them to was to not, you know, farm on the land, let the land rest. And I know that Israel to this day still does that Sabbath year, which is really incredible. So I know we don't do that in the U.S. And so maybe some of even the organic foods that we get are depleted of some of the nutrients and the minerals that we're really needing. Uh, Are there brands uh, or do you have any recommendation in terms of supplementing what we're not getting from our food? But what are some things that we need to look for in our supplements where it's going to help us rather than create more issues for us? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Yeah, because of farming practices, like you said, a lot of fruits and vegetables just don't have the same nutrients in them. Mm -hmm. Um, So it can be helpful to supplement with at least like a multivitamin and mineral complex. Mm -hmm. Um, And for Mm -hmm. most people, maybe some sort of omega-3 fatty acid fish oil type of complex. Um, Mm Because a lot of people don't eat a lot of fish and the other omega-3s are in things like walnuts and Mm flaxseed and chia seed. And those just Mm -hmm. aren't foods that the majority of the people eat on a regular basis in decent amounts too. Um, so supplements are complicated. Um, but I would look for, you know, a good span of vitamins and minerals, like probably the majority of things, um, it's hard because certain vitamins and minerals are, most people get plenty of them or others um, we're on pretty short supply of. So iron tends to be low in people, um, but mm-hmm. typically you want to take iron separately from pretty much anything else because it will essentially grab onto some of those other nutrients and pull them out of the body. So oh, okay. most of the time iron, if you're supplementing with it should probably be taken separately. Um And then calcium is another one that people tend to be low on. So that's a good one to have. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, if it's just a multivitamin mineral, it's just kind of making sure there's at least something of everything in there. You might have to do a little extra work and research, like what are the RDAs, like the recommended daily allowance of those things, and then compare it to the bottle. Are they giving you four times the amount? You don't need that. That's too much. You can you can become, uh, there are toxic effects of too many vitamins and minerals. Um, right. so it's usually safer to go on the lower end of things. Um, mm-hmm. not overdo your vitamins and minerals. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, beyond that, it's a little hard. You definitely need to talk to your doctor if there's things that you mm-hmm. are low on, or you need to be careful about overdosing, but mm-hmm. your general vitamin and mineral supplement is probably pretty safe. Um, but, you know, questions should go to a nutritionist or a naturopath or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But with brands, the hard part is there's a lot of cheap stuff out there that most of it's just going to yeah. come right out in your urine. Um, right. And you're just paying for, ex- you know, a, an expensive bottle of pills that you're just going to pee out, basically. So um, mm-hmm. researching the companies is really important because usually a lot of times mm-hmm. the bottle itself is not going to tell you much. Aside from maybe some certification levels or uh, labels Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. maybe have been certified that yes, what they say is in the bottle is actually in the bottle. 
but that may not tell you what the quality of them is. So researching the company behind the supplement that you're looking at Mm -hmm. is a good way of starting Mm -hmm. at least to see, are they really Mm -hmm. transparent? Do they have integrity? Do they tell you how they make Mm -hmm. things? Do they tell Mm -hmm. you where they get ingredients from? Do they say somewhere in their values that they're really big on natural, clean, you know, good Mm -hmm. practices, sustainable practices, Mm -hmm. um, all those types of things. So, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. there's not a lot, even talking to other registered dietitian nutritionists that it's like, Oh, these are excellent supplements. Um, the main ones, like I personally use a brand called doTERRA. Um, they're Mm -hmm. just a company that I know has a lot of integrity and a lot of science behind their products. Um, Thorn is a popular brand right now for being very mm-hmm. clean and well liked. Um, mm-hmm. There are others out there, but not a mm-hmm. lot. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But I would recommend, you know, looking at the company and does it seem like it's a company that you can trust purchasing supplements from them? Um, another nutritionist has recommended Gaia in terms of like more mm-hmm. herbal supplements. Right. Herbal. I mean, that's a whole other world is herbal supplements and yeah. things too, which can yeah. be very beneficial, but again, probably not something to just randomly do on your own without some sort of professional guidance. Right. Um, right. so I don't know if that answered your question very well or just complicated. It, no, no, it does. And I was wondering, and I haven't tried this out yet, but with the e- EWG app, if any of the supplements, it, you know, if you scan it on the EWG, if it will show up, whether or not you know, it's, it's a, it's an okay brand or stay away from it. I haven't tried that one yet. I don't know if you have, I don't know if you've seen any supplements on, on that app either. That's a good question. Now that you say that, I can't yeah. remember if I've scanned supplements yeah. on there. Yeah. Um, I, I know they have a lot of research on the site that might help mm-hmm. point to good mm-hmm. companies, but mm-hmm. I don't know that I've tried that either. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to do and yeah. find out. <laughs> I know we'll have to do it. And, and, you know, I like, you know, when you said, uh, in researching the companies and, you know, making sure that what is in the bottle is actually in the bottle. And I have to tell you, that is something that I think about all the time. I'm like, how do I know <laughs> that what's in right. my bottle is actually what's in my bottle and that it's going to really help me, you know? So, all right, that's great. Um, is there anything else in terms of, so we, so we were looking at, you know, uh, we talked about food, we talked about supplements. Um, what about some basic exercise tips? Say someone who hasn't exercised in a while and they want to get back into it. You, you, I always, with my clients, whenever they're, whenever they're wanting to write goals, I'll tell them measurable goals, be realistic in your goals, especially when it comes to their prayer life or devotional time with the Lord, if they haven't been reading their Bible, I I tell them it really isn't realistic to say that you'll spend two hours a day because, you know, you're not going to do it. So to set measurable goals where it will allow you to uh, have consistency. So I would assume with exercising, it would be the same thing and not spending three hours a day in the gym because who really has that amount of time, but what would be some basic tips in getting started with exercising for folks? Yeah, good question and good kind of tips that you added in there. Um, Mm -hmm. I agree that starting small and reasonable is really important. Like most Mm -hmm. people should be working out at least six days a week ideally seven, even if it's just kind of walking or gardening or that type of thing. But Mm -hmm. most people aren't going to start with working out six days a week. It's too much. If you're like a very sedentary person, you're at a desk all day, you're on the couch most of the day to start Mm -hmm. working out six days a week is a little too much. Like that might be the ideal long-term goal, but I almost Mm -hmm. never start people there. I usually (laughs) suggest like, can you start with like three days a week? We'll start there and you can always add but that's easier than starting at six days a week and burning yourself out within a month. And then you're sick of exercise. So I would definitely, (laughs) just like you said, like start with smart goals where it's what's reasonable, what's doable with a schedule that you have. Like Mm -hmm. you said, maybe an hour would be great. That's a great amount of exercise, but is, is that going to happen? Or are you going to go, Oh, I didn't have time for the hour. So I did nothing. I always say like, Mm -hmm. at least if you can do 15, 20 minutes, do Mm -hmm. something rather than, Mm -hmm say you have to do an hour. And if you can't do an hour, you just skip the whole thing, just do whatever you can do. So I would suggest people, if they're not exercising already, start with like 20 minutes a day, 
And walking is probably the easiest thing for anyone. Mm -hmm. Anyone is pretty good with, okay, I can go for a walk. Um, and then maybe once you get in the habit of that, then maybe you can add in a day of strength training, or you can change one of your walk days to a walk jog day or a swim or a hike or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and kind of start to build, um, you do want to do cardiovascular exercise, like walking, swimming, running. You do want to do strength training. Strength training is very important. And a lot of people skip over that because all they ever want to do is walk and never go further than that. Um, Strength training is really important for building muscle, boosting your metabolism, building strong bones, um, making all of life easier. Cause now you can carry mm -hmm. groceries and you can, you know, get mm -hmm. up and down off of chairs easily and just those, mm -hmm. you know, simple mm -hmm. type of things. Um, mm -hmm. but again, it might be a little bit much to go start doing a three days a week strength training program. So, mm -hmm. um, I, it's important to do both, but to sort of ease into it, you know, like like I said, maybe three days a week at first, then maybe four, mm -hmm. then maybe five, or maybe you start adding on and you do 30 minutes a day instead of 20. Um, so mm -hmm. I would agree. I would start right down some realistic attainable goals that you want to start with and maybe do that for three or four weeks, assess where you're at, and then see if you can maybe add in a next step to kind of keep you going, keep you um, getting strong and healthy and, you know, depends on what your goal is. Um, right. but those are two things that I would strongly recommend. And with, with strength training, it doesn't have to be, you start at the gym with weight machines and dumbbells and all that stuff. It might be that you're doing right. calisthenics at home and you're just mm -hmm. starting with squats and push-ups and pull-ups and planks and that type of thing. And like really mm -hmm. get those nailed down, learn, you mm -hmm. know, the right form and how to do them. And once you've got that down, then maybe you mm -hmm. can bring in weights. Um, a lot of people tend to start like too gung ho and then they either get hurt or they get exhausted and then they don't want to do it anymore. Right. So right. Um, right. slow and steady and kind of a slow buildup, I think is the best way to do it. Right. Or they're really, really sore and they can't move for three days. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. And then they don't want to experience that again. So it's like, why don't I go back and do that same workout? Yeah. I know. I know. I know. That's so funny. And so I, I think that everyone's got 15 minutes a day where they can do something, where they can move their bodies. And I know that when I was working in um, in LA, there was Echo Park Lake just down the street. So during my lunch hour, a, a coworker and I, we would go to that lake uh, probably two or three times a week. And we would walk around at one time. That would be about 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes. And then we still had time to get back and eat our lunch. So, yeah. you know, for people that are, are feeling like or believing that they don't even have the time to even walk, you know, if you're at work and you, you do have a desk job, maybe get a couple of coworkers to go with you. It's always more fun to yeah. exercise with someone else than, than to do it by yourself. Um, so wherever possible, make it fun. <laughs> Definitely. Know. I agree with you. I think, yeah, I think part, a big part of it is finding what do you like to do? Do you like to walk with five people at lunch? Do you like to go to a group fitness class and meet other people right. and hang out? Right. Do you like to do it alone? Do you like one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. with a personal trainer? Like you might have to try yeah. different things and right. you might realize like, you hate working out at home alone, but you love Zumba class or vice versa. You can't stand being mm -hmm. in groups, but you love being at home with a YouTube mm -hmm. video or something. Mm -hmm. um, or, right. uh, you know, you might love a challenge. Like some people are very motivated by say doing like a couch to 5k program, or, you mm -hmm. know, I'm going to do a sprint triathlon, or I'm going to do a 5k walk or, you know, whatever, like some sort of challenge, um, or something even that you put money into and you have to commit <laughs> to like a race of some sort, yeah. um, having yeah. that for some people or some sort of competition works really well mm -hmm. for some people. So I think kind of experimenting mm -hmm. is good too. And figuring out what, what gets you excited, what gets you motivated so you'll actually stick with it. Yeah, absolutely. And for people that have not worked out in a really, really long time and, and maybe are just a little bit overwhelmed and trying to figure out how to even get started. Holly had some really great tips here, but I would reach out to Holly because she can help you get started and, and figure out what it is that you're really wanting to accomplish with your goals, whether it's with your eating or wanting to get fit or even both. 
you know, uh, Holly and I have worked together. You know, we've tried to figure it out as well. And she's really, she does have a heart, you know, for people and helping them. And, and really, it's not just about getting fit and getting strong, but there's a healing element to it as well which I really like. I love your approach with that, that holistic approach, introducing God or not introducing God, but including God, you know, in this process. Um, Cause we're not alone in it. And he does have answers for us. And every single person would, wouldn't you say, and I know with the clients that I work with, I don't approach every single client in the same way because everyone's different. So what may work for one client may not, the approach may not work for someone else. So the, so my clients are my best teachers. Mm. They're the ones that I learned from and I learned so much from them. It, they allow me to be better at what I do for my current and future clients as well. So mm. Yeah. What, what about you, Holly? What have you learned? I think this is cool. What have you learned, you know, from your clients and how do you approach, you know, every client that you work with and what they're coming to you for? That's a good question. Um, I would agree that I think I learn from every client. I approach a lot of them differently. I also do see a lot of themes that run through. So I think the more people I've worked with, the more I'm like, okay, this is a common thing that needs to be addressed with people, but then everyone's mm -hmm. so unique in what motivates them or what's hard for them or what they like to eat or how they like to exercise. Um, if they're more focused on holistic health or they're more focused on being at the gym, like it's so different with everyone. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I mean, interesting, I think talking to you, I feel like I need to be a psychologist with a lot of clients, or that's why we talked about yeah. last time. It's like, it's helpful yeah. to have partnerships with counselors and therapists, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I think that's what I've learned a lot about is mm -hmm. how to work with the psychology of people. And like we talked about for the fears that people mm -hmm. have, um, that they may not even realize they have, mm -hmm. um, a lot of women deal with a lot of, you know, self-esteem issues, um, previous attempts to lose weight or right. not liking the way they look. They want to go back to a certain way they looked. Um, right. Yeah. A lot of body image issues for sure. Yeah. Definitely a lot yeah. of those. Um, and I think, you know, one of the big things that I've seen from a lot of people kind of like we talked about is that sort of fear as well as that, like there's a, a constant desire for a lot of people to quit when they don't see quick results. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what I love about working with people long-term is if you stick with it, you see the results. And if you're willing to try different things, a lot of people, mm -hmm. if one thing doesn't work quickly, it's like, oh, well, nothing works for me. Um, mm -hmm. but it's take, sometimes it takes experimentation. It takes trying different things. It tries, you know, different foods, different exercises, different, right. different times when you work out or different approaches to exercise. Mm -hmm. Um, and everyone mm -hmm. is different in that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I, if possible, I like to work with people long-term to work through that stuff, but I also mm -hmm. think people can benefit from kind of like you were talking about a second ago is even if you just kind of start and like get a roadmap from someone. Like I think coaching is invaluable. I've used plenty of coaches for different areas mm -hmm. of life and having someone who mm -hmm. can just like direct you and narrow down the overwhelming noise <laughs> about everything. And like, right. here, start here, try this path. I think that can be really helpful for people to not have to figure mm -hmm. it out themselves. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people desire that accountability of, I just need someone to like, keep me on track, push me, encourage me so that I don't give up. Um, yeah. Yeah. and I think that's, Definitely. that can be done through a coach that can be done through a trainer that can be done through your best mm -hmm. friend, a spouse mm -hmm. a group of yeah. like-minded yeah. people, a counselor, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I know. Uh, I, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a fitness coach or anything like that. And, and a lot of the women that I do work with, there are body image issues. There are struggles with food. I can get to the emotional aspects of it. I can get to those false beliefs, but helping them get started. I, you know, everyone's different. And so that's why I too like working with other people who are, uh, that's their area of expertise. So, um, 
And, and I think we need a team of people, you know, to help us with the different things because I can't wear all the hats and I'm not supposed to. And and I've had my own struggles. And I I think what was really helpful for me was uh, with this naturopathic doctor that you had referred to me, Holly, she ran labs and ran 30 tests. And we were able to finally figure out, oh my goodness, this is what's going on here. It's not that I don't know how to eat well. It's not that I'm not exercising, but there were other factors involved that were that I did not know about that was an obstacle for me. So now that we have an answer, we have a path forward. And would you say for some of the some of the clients that you work with, where part of the struggle may be that they don't know all that may be going on and maybe lab work might be helpful for them? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think a lot of people don't know what all that's going on. And that's why I like the holistic approach is mm-hmm. it could be your stress. That's the main issue. It might not be your food or it might be, um, your sleep, or it might be, you know, a, something going on in your body that you have no idea about. Um, so then I can come in and help with some of those things. And then there might be people kind of like you where I don't run labs, but maybe Mm -hmm. I can refer you to someone who runs labs Mm -hmm. and can figure that out for you. So like you said, I think we need a team sometimes because sometimes there is a lot, the body is Mm -hmm. so complicated in the most amazing, (laughs) beautiful way. God created it that way, but it is complicated and intricate and so many things can be going on at once. And yes, sometimes Mm -hmm. it might be a hormone issue. It might be a, a gut issue. It could, you know, it could be anything or, you know, like you found out a totally different issue with a virus. And so it's, right. there could be a whole lot going on. So I think it's important to, to try different things. And if things aren't working, mm-hmm. maybe you need to try a, a different aspect, you know, a different health professional to mm-hmm. see if they can, you know, mm-hmm. just like in your example, like maybe you need test run, maybe you need to see a doctor, maybe you need to see a physical therapist, yeah. like you, right. Yeah, you might need a little bit of a team around you to help figure out what's the underlying issue if you're really struggling to get to your goal. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. So before we wrap up, is there is there anything else that you would like to share that you think would be important or helpful? Um, I think there's lots of things. I'll try and narrow it down. Um, I think mm-hmm. that... For me, at least recently, I think with, you know, the clients I happen to be working with, and I think this applies across the board and I've sort of already said it, but sticking with it, um, being faithful to your plan, to your program, or just to your goal, maybe you're not following a specific program, but um, Mm kind of coming up with a plan, like those smart goals that we talked about, facing your fears and continuing to persevere is really, really important because big changes to our health, as you and I both know, is not a quick fix. It just does not happen Mm -hmm. fast and it can so quickly be discouraging. And so I think it's important to normalize the fact that it takes a long time. Like you said, with your clients, it might take a year to get deep Mm -hmm. down to their healing. It might take Mm -hmm. a year to get even halfway to your goal, depending on what your goal is. And that's totally okay and normal. And there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. You might do two steps forward, one step back, but you got to keep moving forward. And if you can be consistent and faithful to that, I think not only will that give you results, but I think that is a big component of even the Christian life is being Mm -hmm. faithful to God and what Mm -hmm. he's called you to, to persevering, Mm -hmm. to enduring, to Mm -hmm. building up your character in those ways. It applies to far more than just what you're eating and how you're exercising and the healthy things that you're doing in your life. It applies to your spiritual life your emotional yeah. and mental health, when you mm-hmm. learn how to stick with something, mm-hmm. dig into fears, figure out what they are, work through, you know, all the emotions and all the things. Um, but yeah. most people give up too quick. And I think that's mm-hmm. a big takeaway that I would want people to really understand is like, mm-hmm. even if it's hard, even if you're not seeing quick progress, keep pushing through, just keep mm-hmm. doing the best you know how, get a coach if you need it, persevere until you get to your goal. Cause most people will reach it if mm-hmm. they're willing to stick it out and to yeah. you know, give it to God, bring him into the process, let him be your strength. Um, right. and bring other people around you to support you. Yeah. I love that. Run the race. 
Don't yeah. sit it out, run the race, right? And yeah. and and allow God to show each and every one of us, you know, those of us that are in the race, what does he want us to see in this? What does he want to, what does he want us to learn about ourselves? What does he want us to learn even about him, right? So when we when we enter into this with him, there is so much that he is going to reveal and and really I think just keeping focus on uh, the end goal. What is the end goal? Is it to lose weight, or is there something? Is there something more profound than that? And I'm not saying that losing weight isn't, you know, a big deal. It is. Uh, but what ultimately, in losing that weight, will you gain? In 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 you know, getting healthy, right? Uh, yeah. not eating the way that, you know, you used to um, and just sticking with it and knowing that it really is a marathon and not a sprint. Yeah. Yeah. So I so appreciate you being here today, Holly, and all the really great information and the tips and uh, underneath the video, there will be links to be able to contact Holly. Uh, Holly, do you give a free uh, consultation at all if anyone were to call you to explore being able to work with you? I do. Yeah. So if you um, are able to put my email in the, mm -hmm. the show description, people can email me yeah. there and get a free 20 minute consult to kind of learn more about right what I do, how we can work together, how I might be able to help you reach your goals. We can do that. And then additionally mm -hmm. on my website, I have a resources page. And mm -hmm. if you just maybe, maybe you're not quite ready for coaching, but you want just some guides and help, there's a bunch of free downloads. I have like goal setting guides and some different meal plans and grocery shopping lists and things like that. So that's even another place you could go. If you just maybe just need like a little something to get you started, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. those are both mm -hmm. available too. Yeah, I love it. All right. So I normally end of the show with some scripture to encourage people that are either watching or they're listening. And let me see which one I'm going to do. Oh, yes. I love this. Um, so Psalm 62, 8, trust in him at all times, O people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. I love that. All right. Well, thank you so much, Holly, for being here. And thank you to all of you that are listening and watching and make sure you tune in next week. There's another great show on the way.